benefit from the Word of God. I see the time. I'm not looking to be lengthy. I'm, I'm just looking to move in the Spirit. That's all I want. You know, I, I like all the dimensions of all of our services. Where like these Sunday nights, I, I feel a little bit free and not don't feel the restrictions of time the way that I do sometimes on Sunday morning. There's a lot to get in, a lot to happen. And we have wonderful services, high, but every service is different. It just seems like they have their own individuality and purpose and I, I love that. I just I love how the Lord woke last week. It was a, that was a phenomenal service Sunday night. Amen. And just appreciate what God's doing tonight. Turn with me to Acts chapter number two. Try not to get a lot of preliminaries tonight. Just want to share a few things before I jump in. First of all, I just want to say I feel drawn to this, and maybe some folks will say, well, Brother Seville, you're about six, eight weeks early. It's not Pentecost Sunday. Uh, well, I've, I love preaching about the cross and the crucifixion. It's probably one of my favorites. But I just didn't feel that's where I was to go tonight. So I want to look at this. And uh, I also want to say I just appreciate the Lord. I had to work Wednesday at the hospital. And... Uh, it was a long drive to work. It was a long drive home from work. They released us around 11.30. It might have been better just to stay a little bit later. And, uh, you know, it's just a creature of habit coming down through Dolphin there. I got off on 325 and was coming down through Dolphin. And uh, coming down a little incline before 3B and I put on my brakes and I started fishtailing all over the place. It was just slush and slop. I wasn't going fast. And I got straightened out fairly quick. I just, you know, Lord help me. Just glad no one was coming. You know, it could have been very, I mean, I guess someone could have been killed. I don't know that would have been killed, but I already uh, totaled one vehicle this year. I'd like to be done for the rest of my life. And uh, so the slush was terrible when I just so I go all the way up through Clark's Valley, Tire City, come down through. It was a perfect drive. I didn't have any problems. The snow was just loaded on the road. It was easier to navigate than being in slush. But I just thank God for being with us. Amen. God is faithful. And uh, just just love the Lord. Amen. Acts chapter number two. The Bible says, Not on the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all in one place in one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house from the, uh, all the city. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Jumping on down, it says it set upon them, and they began to speak with other tongues. I just want to look at. Tonight, Pentecost, for a couple of moments, and how important that is. I love what we felt tonight. I love worship. I love hearing other people being lost in the Spirit, and I love other people speaking in tongues, being endued with the power of God. And, and I, I love Pentecost. I love everything about it because I believe it's biblical. I believe that we see the account of it here. Acts is an open uh, book. It begins, but it, it does not close. It's open because it's the acts of the apostles. We are now the disciples, apostles of Jesus Christ. We are the church. It's the acts of the New Testament church. We are still the New Testament church. It's the acts of the church. But more importantly than that, it's the acts of the Holy Ghost. And so the Holy Ghost is still working and moving in the church and in lives today. We are the church and the Bible uh, says that in, when the day of Pentecost, do you ever notice that a day will change your life? A day can change your life. There's days that you will remember. I will forever remember uh, uh, November the 7th, 2009. That was the day that I got married. Forever changed my life. Uh, I will never forget October 5th, 2014. God knows our life has never been the same. 
Amen. It's just, it's, it's wonderful. You know, I'll never forget graduation day, Brother David. Uh, when I graduated from high school, when I graduated from Bible school, we've had some other graduate times those days, uh, I, I remember as well. Uh, you, you, you will remember that, you know, the birth of a child, a graduation, a wedding, an adoption, a, a, a new job. Uh, uh, there are some folks that because of the nature of, uh, of getting to see them, they rejoice because their old organ had uh, not been functioning and they rejoice because they never forget the day they had an organ transplant and their life has changed. So a day can change everything. We think about, uh, uh, you know, for us as a country, July the 4th, 19, or I'm sorry, 1776. Uh, we celebrate our independence. We think about that. Uh, and Brother David, we think about that day. Many of you will, will remember uh, September the 11th, 2001. It's a day that we won't forget. So here in the book of Acts chapter number two, uh, 2, we find that here is a day that was in the church that they will not forget. It's the day of Pentecost. It's the day of uh, 50, 50 days after Passover. Remember, we're, we're celebrating Passover time as we uh, celebrate the Passion of the Christ. Uh, we, 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 the 50 days, uh, we, we, we reflect and we think about 50 and what that means. Uh, most people feel that uh, 50 days after the exodus from Egypt, that, that Moses got the, the, the Ten Commandments upon Mount Sinai. That, that number 50, it means something. Can, uh, the, the, the commemorating of it, uh, the manifestation of it, the harvest of it. And so the, what happened at Pentecost? Well, there was three things that I think are very important. We find that there was a sound like a naughty rushing wind. Can I, can I bring that into our vocabulary? We wouldn't say a mighty rushing, but we'd probably brother this say it was a violent wind. It was a horrific wind. So it was a strong wind. And, 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 and then we find that there was that sight of fire upon them as well. So we have wind, we have fire. And then we see that there is that of, uh, 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 of speaking in other tongues. The Bible says that they spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. It was the manifestation of what the prophet Joel had prophesied about. And so Pentecost, it wasn't a one-time event, but it was the beginning of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. Amen. For the outpouring of God's Spirit. Amen. The fire and the wind of God. And I'm going to look at that. Fire and wind, we would say that they are probably forces of nature. Do you agree with me? Fire and wind, both forces of nature. And uh, we know that winds can be powerful. I've been noticing if you pull into the parking lot after we had some strong winds, uh, our solar lights, they're all kind of crooked now. Because the wind has definitely blown them and changed the direction of what they were at one time. The wind is powerful. I mean, the, the, the wind is, is amazing. And, and there's something that, that we need to know that with all of our advancements, all of our advancements, and we live in a very advanced time. I, I just imagine a blood clot at one time took lives. Now we have medicine when someone's having a stroke and they have a blood clot that we can bust that up and they'll make a full recovery. But maybe at one time, uh, that cataract on the eye, it would lead to blindness. But now we have technology through a laser that they can go in and they can take that and remove it and give your eyesight back to you. They can even take and reshape your eye if, if, if you have astigmatism and you can have 20-20 vision. I mean, how amazing is that technology? The weatherman sometimes gets it right, right? And sometimes he gets it right. I mean, technology is amazing, but one thing with all of our technology, we still cannot control wind, and we cannot control fire. Just ask him in California. So with all technology, it can't be controlled. I want to tell you that the Spirit of God tonight cannot be controlled. Some people have tried to do it with their programs and their bulletins and said this is the way church will be. But as long as Brother Seville is the pastor of Grand Prairie Bible, we will never run by a bulletin. 
because we cannot control the Spirit of God. We are men and women who are led by the presence and the Spirit of God. And we are not to control it. Only He knows what's going to be accomplished in the service. Only He knows who will be there. Only He knows the ministry that is needed. From the song service to the testimonies to the praying with individuals to the ministry of the Word. Only God knows who's going to be here and what they need. Amen. And the, the wind, uh, we know that wind uh, blows and when we don't know what direction it's blowing or where it's going to blow. But one thing for sure, it blows in the direction it wants to. Can I tell you that God will drop blow, Brother David, in the direction that He wants tonight? Amen. Maybe it's praying with one another. Maybe it's preaching the Word. Amen. Maybe it's just the, the, the service changed around in order. But we're going to let the wind of God blow the way He wants to blow tonight. Amen. We're going to allow Him to blow in our lives. I need to tell you that the wind of God is blowing in the world today. And if we will be sensitive, we will feel and we will experience the wind. Mm -hmm. Do you know wind and fire are transforming forces? It's amazing how wind can blow and change the landscape of things. You ever notice it blows dirt, Sister Dot? It blows rocks. It will blow trash. Uh, 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 it, it, uh, uh, it, it will change the very appearance of things. Has anyone ever here heard of this terminology before? Wind erosion. You know what that means? It means the wind has been working and moving, and it's eroded, and it's transformed, and it's changed. Do you realize that fire has the same transforming force? I'm not talking about our trials and our tribulations that were melted and the goldsmith looks and he, he wants to see his reflection in us. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that those precious metals, when they are heated, amen, all of a sudden they become softened and they become pliable. That's why we need the Holy Ghost blowing in our services. That's why we need Him blowing in our lives. Amen. Because the wind of God will erode and will change the landscape of who we are. Amen. We're not that old person anymore. But God has changed us. Amen. Because the wind is blowing in. The trash is gone. Amen. He's moved some big things that we thought were unmovable. The wind of God, the fire of God has come in and He began to mold us and made us and we're pliable in His hands and He changes us into what He wants us to be. That is why we need the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. God is constantly working and God is constantly transforming. I don't care how you've been saved, but I know you've been saved a long time. God's still transforming you. Brother Eli, you've been saved a long time. God's still transforming you. Brother Doug, you've been saved a long time, but the Spirit of God's still transforming you. And every one of us in here, God still wants to work and move and transform us. But we need the wind and we need the fire. You see, wind and fire are generating forces. Any of you ever see pictures, Brother Craig, of those big windmills back in old times? And uh, they, would, they would be used to grind grain. They would be used to pump water and irrigate fields, Brother Wally. Because they knew that way back then, that wind could be a generating force. You'll find that most recently there are those uh, windmills. Brother Dennis, you've probably seen them when you went to visit Aaron. You look up on the mountain not too far from where my mom lives. And, the whole side of the mountain is full of these windmills that generate uh, 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 power and uh, are supposed to become some new clean power. They're, they're huge. They're enormous. We pulled up to them and you hear and you can, at times on a clear day, you can hear that. My mom lives in 
a, a, a mile or two from them. You can actually hear them. It sounds like the force of wind, she says, through the woods. Because you can hear them. It's, it's a generating force. And they say that, that wind, those wind farms can uh, populate and generate the amount of electricity as some nuclear power plants can. Can you imagine that? That wind has the power. And for centuries, do you know that the wind has been used upon ships and upon boats to generate a, a, a force that would take people across the sea and navigate them to their direction. I want to tell you that the same wind of God is working and moving today. There is power in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And if you will allow the wind of God to blow in your life, the power that it can generate to change things, the power that it can do to navigate you to the direction that God wants you to go in. Amen. We are to be filled with the Spirit. Oh, God, let the wind of God blow upon us. We know that fire has that same capacity. Almost, uh, uh, well, I shouldn't say almost all of us, but lots of us. Uh, you know, I have an oil furnace in my house, but it has fire in it. Amen. I don't do any good without that fire. Some of you still are stoking the coal furnace and uh, maybe have a hopper that, that, that generates your, your heat. Some of you may have a wood pellet stove. Some of you may have a wood burning stove. Some of you might have an outside burning stove, Brother Doug, that generates things for the inside. But it still has fire, which is power that will generate and get the job done. How do we make it, folks? How do we do it? It's by the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God burning and working. I said, Tom, give me just a few more minutes. I love a few years ago, I think, when I worked for Pinnacle for 15 <coughs> years, I could get me a, could get me a, a gift. And they sent me a catalog. I looked through that. There wasn't much I could use, but they had a good leaf blower in there. So I got that leaf blower, and it blows away leaves. Sometimes I've used it to blow away a light snow. It's pretty amazing. Use it to blow away dirt. You know, the wind is cleansing. The wind knows how to clean out. Do you know that fire is cleansing tonight? How many of you ever watched some of those old movies where some guy got shot? <coughs> and he got shot, and next thing you know, they're working on taking that bullet out of him. Now what's the next thing they go and do? Don't they go to the fire? And they put a big hot iron on that to sear that. Now, if you want to think that's cleaner, however, but that's the, because it burned out anything that might be left there and caused them problems. The fire is cleansing tonight. Wind is cleansing. Amen. The fire of God. What did Isaiah say? Oh, I dwell in the midst of an unclean people. And the, and the angel came and put a coal of fire upon his lips and cleansed him. Fire is cleansing. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. Do you know that winds can be destructive forces? Brother Craig, you lived out there in Joplin when they had the hurricane. My sister was telling me that uh, last week that uh, they, were, they were going to go to Jacksonville, Alabama to preach. And she said that things got canceled because a tornado come through and uh, just destroyed a church down the street from the church where they were going to preach. And, Destroyed a business, destroyed some homes. It's pretty amazing. You'll hear about two by fours being flung through trees. It's destructive. That wind can do. They'll take a, a broom and, and that wind will throw it through a fence post. I mean, it's pretty amazing to think what wind can do. I'm wrapping up by closing this and saying this. You think you got something that's too big to move, to clean out, to get rid of. It's nothing for the Holy Ghost. He can pick it up and he can throw it. And he can do the impossible. He can. He can do the impossible. I can never take a broom handle by the wall and stick it through the fence post. I can never take a tube by four and stick it through a tree. But oh, let the wind of God blow him. That's nothing for him. He can take burdens that are so surmountable and so big and seem like they're boulders in our life that we're going to be stuck with forever and the wind of God can blow them away. We need the Holy Ghost, my friend. 
We need the Holy Ghost. Amen. I still believe that the Spirit of God, amen, is the most powerful force on the face of this earth. Amen, Sister Beth, if you come to the piano. Amen. Tonight, I want to close by saying one more thing. It is the wind of God that brings life. You probably have sung songs, you probably have heard it said that the Spirit of God is the breath of God. Brother David, when God created Adam, and there he laid there as a lifeless being. Sister God, the Bible says that God breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. Amen. 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 my living soul, Brother God. But if the wind of God would blow through, I wonder how many situations that we think are dead would come to life. I still believe in revival. I still believe in divine healing. I still believe in the move of the Holy Ghost. But what we need is for God to breathe the breath of life into the vessel. The wind of God is still blowing through the world today. God's not dead. God's not dead. Have you ever went outside before and maybe you're there and you don't even notice it's a beautiful day and you feel nothing? But you know that wind is still there. Even though it's subtle, even though it's soft and gentle and seems placid, maybe it's not moving and working, but all of a sudden you feel that wind on your face. Just because things have been blessed, <clears throat> just because we've not felt a mighty blood, doesn't mean that the wind is not there. The wind is still there. Just because we can't see it and feel it doesn't mean anything. God is still there and God is still moving. God is still walking. So if you're in that moment in time where you feel like, God, where's the wind? Stop. I believe that you feel the breeze in your face. Let him blow on you tonight. Would you let the breath of God just blow on you? That old song, let him breathe on me. Let him breathe on me. Let the breath of God now breathe on me. Would that be your prayers you're gathering the honor tonight? Breathe. Blow out the boulders. Breathe. Let the wind erode my life and change me. Fall and fire. Empower me. Change and generate your spirit in me. God, make me a power house for you. As I'm reliable in your hands. Would you gather it tonight and allow the Holy Ghost to work and move in you? Hallelujah. Let him breathe.